When you live in a community, you don't know whether it's special or not. You know, I've lived in Rapanyab all of my life, and it's, it's a bit about what's culture, isn't it? What creates a culture in anything, in a business or in a community or in a team? From my childhood, I have dream to one day I go to Australia, see how people live there. I think Australia is a very magic country. Very magic. This little town's Rapanyup, and Rapanyup is an Aboriginal word for branch hanging over water. The special thing about this town, it survives. It's got a lot of good people that do a lot of work for its preservation. Like we strive to, to keep the town going. It's, it's a pretty close-knit community. Everyone knows everyone and we have a good social life in here, not like in Melbourne. <laughs> if you don't speak much English, you can still have a good time in Rapanya. Like people will make you feel like you're at home. I like, I like people from Rapanya. Everybody help, everybody support. And I put all my energy in, in this art because I, I like it. Yeah, we were delighted that someone would come and put their perspective on the silos and Julia, she seemed to quickly capture the significance of the sporting clubs in the town and what that meant. Sport and football and netball are just such an integral part of these smaller rural communities. That's the culture that was king in this area. Well, it really is. It takes in so many members of the community, whether they're players or wives, daughters or grandmothers. Whether it's at the footy or any community event, everyone just realises that we're, we're all in it together. You know, there's not a big class divide in a town this size. It probably just comes down to that's what a lot of Australian communities are like. Anyone who turns up with their bag gets a game. You know, it's inclusive of everybody of all skill levels. There's a really strong message in that. You know, you're part of us, come on in. Many of us in agriculture are very outward looking because we understand that our livelihood in agriculture is dependent on international trade. I've seen nothing but open arms for people who want to come in and engage in the community, be part of it. So in Victoria, I think we have something like 100,000 people a year coming into the state. But many of those people end up living in an urban environment because they don't realise there's opportunities for them to move into the regions. And to attract people to country areas, I think immigration adds richness to our lives in Australia and it's an important part of our future. A lot of opportunities is here. The amount of jobs this town can generate is unbelievable. You don't know, it's still we're looking for some people to work in our company. We've been very lucky that we've got people from you know, many and varied backgrounds. Um, a couple of people have moved to town and we're looking for jobs, and other people have actually moved here with the job in mind. So more recently, we've sponsored um, a Colombian couple, both vets. My background in Colombia, I'm a veterinary science doctor. Yeah, we were living in a small town as well. Again, lived in Melbourne for three years, worked in hotel industry and for a cleaning company because they probably didn't realise where to go or what to do. So he offered me a job and he explained me his project. He don't want the town to get down in population, just gonna grow it up. So I said, yeah, it's good. Probably in the last five years especially, there's probably been nearly seven or eight nationalities will move to the town, which is really fantastic. The local school has Chinese as the language that they're learning. Just adds a more inclusive nature to the town and, and everyone thinks that perhaps rural Victoria doesn't have that, but certainly do here. My name is Guillermo Sierra, but everyone here in town knows me as Will. It's easy for them to pronounce my name. <laughs> It's good for them to see and have a taste of a different culture that they've never seen before, and they love it. The places that would have closed down, so if these people are prepared to move to these more isolated spots, fair play, I think bring it on. It's fantastic for everybody in the region and, and most definitely will be in the long run. For our kids, it's brilliant. We understand we're just a dot on the map, but we think that if we can develop ideas and thoughts and start to share that in conversation with others, communities with similar ideals and similar challenges, if you like, can start to share their ideas back. And between us all, collectively, we will get to a better place. One of the great examples of regional immigration is, is in the town of Nil. Up until that stage, I think it's fair to say that Nil was probably one of the most unculturally diverse towns you will ever get. They started off looking, you know, looking for people in their duck factory. They had a shortage of people who could work in the factory. They initially employed, I think, a group of five or six Korean people. 
and that opened up the doors to something like 50 to 60 families of Karin people now initially moving to Nil. Probably 200 people move in to live in our community. But now starting to spread out through the northwestern Victorian region into Nil, Horton and Horsham and the other towns. And the sort of group that we want to partner with in towns like Rapenia to try and replicate what's been done in Nil. Because we are not alone in having a shrinking population and embracing that new things can be fantastic. It enriches your culture, it enriches your town. Yeah, it's a big learning experience for us all, for them and for us. I've been with new people speaking a different language for me, and people are really friendly here. They're just trying to get you involved with everyone, or the different groups or team that the community has is the best way to meet new people. And it's the same with any country town, I think. You don't even have to play sport, but just, you know, contribute in some way. It's always a good way to bring new faces to the town. There's different ideas and experiences as well. I went to the first practice last week. It was a little bit confusing for me, but it was really fun. It is the focal point for, for any of these towns. It is very much part of the fabric holding the community together. So people that just love playing footy and people that, that come and watch the football, it's just a big social thing and it helps if we're winning, which we haven't been doing a lot of lately, but hopefully we can turn that round. It just keeps the town going and, and lifted. I have found new people, new cultures, a family here. Now I have uh, Australian parents. We can afford to buy a house, a car, a, you know. Yeah, pretty happy here. The arts are also a really important part of what our culture is and when we have new people move into town we get a whole different concept of art and artistic value. When I do my art uh, I see how houses make people happy and feel happiness and feel love inside. It's number one important silos are bringing to the towns a uh, new energy or new life to the, to the towns that they are needed, really. Yeah, it tells a story about rural Australia, I guess.